Okay, we'll just pick up where we left off, guys. I'm currently on page 14 of the user guide, and we're going to have a look at the fiscal year to date. It's an optional argument that enables you to customise the calendar if your year end is not on the 31st of December. So we're going to insert a new pivot table into cell C26. So let's zoom over to C26. And then from the insert tab, we're just going to insert a pivot table and OK. So it's the calendar month in the rows drop down and then the week number underneath month and it's just total sales. So I'll do a search for total sales and there it is just there. We're going to add a calendar slicer, a calendar year slicer I should say. This happens if it, because we've used the search bar to, to find our measure here then we can only see the results of our search so we just have to cancel out of it in order to get all of our tables back and we'll right click year and add a slicer and we'll just position that just above our new pivot roughly about there I think and we're going to add a new measure into our pivot table so in the sales table, and the measure name is total sales fiscal, and it's going to be the 31st of March, all in uppercase. So again, we need our trusty friend, our calculate, and again, it's total sales. We enter a comma, and this is our filter expression using our dates year to date. All good so far and again it's from our calendar table it's the date field and this is where we put in the optional parameter so it's a comma and then it's surrounded by quote marks and it's going to be the 31st of the third and just quote marks now we don't need the year I mean if you add the year the function will accept it but it's just ignored and it makes an awful lot of sense if you think about it, especially when our years span over several, several years. If we put a date in there, then it would only be subject to, to that particular year. And that's certainly what we don't want. So we'll close up with a couple of closing parentheses. Again, it's currency, zero decimal places. And again, we can check our formula just to make absolutely certain we're OK, but it looks good. And again, I'm still having this problem and I'll just put in the search bar 31st and it finds it so perfect. And then we'll just drop that under total sales and there's our fiscal year end. Now, when I'm inserting a fiscal year end, it normally takes me a while just to make sure that everything is as it should be. Well, first of all, I've got to sort out this filter or this slicer I should say so I'll increase that to four and then if we go to 2002 and apply some conditional formatting so I'm going to select cell E28 and from our home tab we just click on conditional formatting select the data bars or oh, you can choose any one you like guys I'm going to choose the blue now the reason I do this this way is that when the pivot table is sliced the conditional formatting will apply to all of the cells. If I highlight a block of cells and apply conditional formatting to the block then it's subject to, to that range, that block that I've highlighted. So if I choose to do it this way I'll choose the third option where it says all cells showing total cells for fiscal 31st of March values week number. So it doesn't matter how tall the pivot table is, it will always, always apply to just that, that block of cells. So I'll choose that third option. And conditional formatting makes it an awful lot easier. So it's the 31st of March, and this is our greatest value, which is the last week in March. And then the first week starts in April, and we can see our values getting progressively larger and larger. So conditional formatting is perfect for this scenario. We need to put some formatting on our pivot table. So let's do our text wrap and center both horizontally and vertically. We'll increase the height or the depth of our row. And let's see 
we can just squish that a little bit more no probably not that's looking okay and I'll show you what outline form does here so we've got a couple of levels in our rose drop zone now if we go to design and if I say to go in outline form it gives us an extra column because we've got levels underneath our rows so if that suits you then that's great um, if you prefer not to have it that way then I just did a control Z to undo that and you would just have to edit this manually so you could put month and week number if you prefer or just leave it at month it's up to you so outline form is great but it will give you that extra column if you've got levels in your drop zone in your rows drop zone so looking great guys and let's just have another look at that measure now I can go into measures manage measure and get our measure that way or another easy way of doing it. It looks slightly different but you'll be able to see if I put in 31st of March here I'm just searching for our measure you can just right click and edit measure okay so it looks slightly different there's no colouring on the DAX functions or anything okay so it's calculate total sales dates year to date calendar date and that's what we did previously we just stopped it there we didn't add in the optional parameter at the end but here in the fiscal year we just surround our date without the year at the end in quotes and that's how you apply a fiscal end year to your dates year to date perfect now the last thing I want to do here you can see that I've got some subtotals going on and I really don't like subtotals being at the top so again from the design menu subtotals you can choose not to show them at all or you can put them at the bottom I'm going to turn them off completely that's looking great okay guys so that brings us to the end of step one coming up in the practice exercises you'll have an opportunity to look at the other two members of this family when we're generating running totals. So have a go at month to date and quarter to date. And then in the next video, it will be the solutions and we'll go through it together there. But I urge you to have a go on your own first, apply all of the knowledge that you've learned so far, and I'll see you in the solutions bit. Well done, guys.